And so, all right, let's stand to our feet. Let's welcome God. We're thankful here today. We're not here to meet with our worries and stresses. We're here to meet with the Lord. Amen.
you're watching on the YouTube channel, I'm Pastor Gerald, so your Telefax, this is Antonia. We got room at the 9.30, we got room at the 11.30. I know some people want to watch at home, but it is nothing like being here. It's better to be here in the presence of God. This praise team is doing a wonderful job. They're not done. When they've done, they've done a wonderful job today. Would you just be in the presence of the Lord? I just want to say, I just want to say that today, just receive from God today. Receive from Him today. And if you want to know more information about City Church, all you got to do is go to citychurchhalifax.ca. All the information about our services and what we're about. And we'd be happy, happy to talk to you. If you want to give us a phone call, send us an email. And we're just so glad. And I just want to say to the praise team today, because I'm already warmed up because I've been through the 930. So I'm getting to, I get to double, double today, man. So uh, you guys might feel, oh, I feel think I feel the first Oh, I definitely do. Because the, 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 the presence of God is here today. And sometimes when God, as, as Victoria was saying, he's all that matters. You know, he's enough. Sometimes in this life, I don't want to preach a whole different sermon than I'm going to preach later, but I just want to say this, you know, sometimes with everything that the world's going through right now, and you don't know where to turn, Jesus is enough. He has to be enough. He's not enough. Now you've got mood music going, so now I'm really, oh, I really want to go, but I know I should. I can ask Pastor Terry if you want to lead us in a time of prayer right now. Amen. Let's put our hands together and show our appreciation to Pastor Terry. Come on, folks. This Jesus that we're talking about was born in a manger. This Jesus that we're talking about walked this planet for 33 years. This Jesus we're talking about went to Calvary for you and for me. This Jesus that we're talking about hung on the cross and died. And they buried him. And on the third day, he rose again. And today, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, rejoicing in the praise that you're rejoicing in. And everything that you could need today, every problem you've got, every anxiety that you're going through, every stress, he's looking up at the Father and saying, charge it up to me. I died for them. All of our debts, everything has been paid. This is the list that is called in. This is the list that I have in my hand that we made me elect to you. Jesus is the needs meter. Why don't you talk to him for a couple minutes? Raise your hands right now and pray to him. You who are watching on the internet, raise your hands wherever you are, whatever room you're in. If you have to be in a hospital and you're watching this today, raise your hands. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the mighty God is inside you today. The need to hear the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead, church. Talk to him. Talk to him. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your obedience to the Father. Thank you for praying to the Father for the promise of the Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father for coming. And you are in this place today through this praise team, through the preaching, through everybody that's here and everybody's watching to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. I want you to think about this. David, a man after God's own heart, said this in one of the Psalms. He said, you know, I'm facing adversity, anxiety, turmoil, depression, and I couldn't give it up. And I wouldn't have given up had I not believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Come on, say it with me. I believe to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Are you ready to continue to praise the Lord? Say this with me. Amen. Amen.
to church today? Anybody have a good time at church today? <laughs> is it, no? All right, let's go. Let's go home. You can't be quiet. You can't be quiet at the 9.30. Those 9.30 people, they were too quiet. We didn't come to be quiet. We didn't come to be silent. We came to praise the Lord. Amen? amen. And we say amen. Amen. All right. I want to talk to you about it's not a cliche Christianity. We're not walking a cliche Christianity. You know what cliches are, right? Like if you're going through a tough time, you're going through a tough time, someone looks at you and says, when the going gets tough, the tough can't go. Yes. Right? My and it doesn't help you one bit. <laughs> right? What about every cloud has a silver line? What about don't cry over spilt milk? When you were a little kid, and I might talk more about this next week, right now, we'll see if the Lord wants it. But when you were a little kid and you came home and said the other kids called me names, your mom would say, when you look at them and say sticks and stones can break my bones, but names you never heard it. Was it true? <laughs> Was it true? But people would give you a cliche. Pastor, pastor, what do I do? I lost my job. What do I do? I'll just turn that fan upside down. Huh? I'll just turn the fan upside down. What if you just went through a divorce? What if you just went through a big breakup? What if you know somebody who's going through a situation like that? Are you going to look at them and say, well, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all? Is that what you're going to say? Because I've got a whole bunch. I got here. Here, text me these. Well, I just go your way, make something out of it. When you are disappointed with the way things are, change them for the better. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Where there's a will, there's a way. Keep calm, carry on. Bite the bullet, but don't let the head bugs bite. <laughs> All you need to do is pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. When you come to the end of your rope, just tie a knot, hang on. Things turn out the best for the people who make the best of the way things turn out. But well, sometimes good things fall apart so better things can fall together. But well, stop thinking of what could go wrong and start thinking of what could go right. And it's not whether you fall down or whether you get back up. And my all-time personal favorite, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> make lemonade. Anybody have any lemons in your life? <laughs> Do you just add sugar and water? Is that the fix? And you can call this a catchphrase if you want, maybe, but Joyce Myers said this one time, you know, we're serious and we're quoting Joyce Myers, it goes like this, life is hard, but God is good. Yeah. And don't confuse the two. Yeah. Life is hard, but God is good. And don't confuse the two. When life ends in lemons, I'm glad we have something a lot better. The lemonade. I'm glad we have something better than just a list of catchphrases. We have God Himself. We have not just a bunch of catchphrases, we have the living word of God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe there's a great chance to say amen there. Come on, 1130. Come on, 1130. Don't fall into the sins of the 930. Let's go. Don't do it. And for all the 930 who are re-watching this on YouTube, I love you guys. I love you 930. I'm still in the praise worship mode. I'm still just feeling the, the praise and worship in the presence of God. That one we were talking about where God's got a plan for me, maybe we should sing that one at the end. That was a good one. Isaiah 41 is not here More songs to download this week that I'm going to listen to in my car. Isaiah 41 10, fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear make of the day. That's what I need to hear. You know, after my car accident, years back, I was messed up pretty bad, physically. And the, the police officer was like, you need to go to the hospital. You got to go to the hospital. So Tammy took me into the hospital. Everything was hurting, man. I was in, I was in tough shape. And as I was sitting, I had a neck brace on. 
sitting in a wheelchair and I pray someone and it was like, oh man, oh man. And then a brother in Christ came walking through the door from a different church. His wife was in the hospital, he was coming to visit her. And he saw me sitting there. And you know when he came up to me? He said, Pastor, what's wrong? I said, we're in a bad car accident. And he said to me, you need to turn that frown. I said, no. He said, well, you know, when life gives you lemons, I mean, come on, you make life. No. You know what he did? He laid his hands on me. He, he knelt right down in front of me. He put his hands on me. And my parents were there as a witness. And he began to speak the word of God into my life. He quoted Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, because the Lord prays for, for good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. He began to speak the word of God over me. And that sounds a lot better than lemonade, all right? I like lemonade. It can quench your thirst, okay, but don't get me wrong. But I keep the word of God. When we think like is being unfair. What we usually mean is that our life is not what we expected. Because life comes along and brings the unexpected things. John 16, In this world, Jesus said, you'll have trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. Take heart, why? Because he's greater. Doesn't that sound better than check your frown upside down? Yeah. Doesn't it? Yes, I believe when life gives you limits. Yeah, you need to respond. We all need to respond. But we need to respond in faith. Matthew 8. Matthew 8 is the story, of course, to the disciples on the boat. There's a lot of boat stories. Jesus liked going to the boat. Sometimes there was such a big crowd, he'd get in the boat and sail off because there were so many people. But in Matthew 8, you go to the boat story, his disciples are following him. And this is what it says. They got in the boat. The disciples followed him. And without warning. Anything ever happened to you in your life? Yeah. Without warning? Do you think that this COVID stuff that came almost seen without warning? Well, they were trying to once, but nobody would listen. <laughs> Just be honest. And this COVID thing comes without warning. A furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. See, he's setting the example. Yes, there's a storm that's raging, and you're all freaking out. Look at me. I'm cool. Yeah. This boat's not sinking because I'm in it. That's what Jesus is like. He says, I don't even have to say anything. This boat's not sinking because I'm in it. And your boat's not going to sink if Jesus is in it. And that's another super for another day. But he was sleeping, and the disciples woke him up. How many times do we think, well, i got to wake the Lord up because the Lord doesn't know what's going on with the Lord's not paying attention to what's going on. I got a storm right We got problems going. And they said, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, You a little faith. Why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and waves, and it was completely calm. And the men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. I'll tell you who he is. He is the Son of the Living God. He's the Living Word. The phrase that strikes me the most is without warning. As I told you before, it was a normal day, normal ministry, normal meals, normal conversation. These fishermen were no strangers to being in the boat, seeing the signs of the sky, predicting the weather. But without warning, everything was at risk. It became imperative not to complete the task at hand. It became imperative just to stay alive. Sounds like today, didn't it? We've got to just stay alive. Long enough to get to the grocery store back home and stay alive. Pandemic crisis, economic crisis, unexpected by many, yet God never taken by surprise. You hear that? God's not taken by surprise through this. When life throws the unexpected at you, if you are already grounded, you'll be fine. When life gives you a big enough crisis, you need something that isn't moving, something that's not going to shake. Something that isn't capable of letting you down. And that's the Lord Jesus. That's your Heavenly Father. When the unexpected has hit you at work, and there were plenty of people months ago who said, I got laid off, Pastor. What am I going to do? A lot of them got called back to work, so I praise the Lord for that. When the unexpected has come upon your marriage, when the unexpected has been told to you 
at the doctor's office, when the unexpected hits you on the highway, as it did me, you were left spinning out of control, calling out to the name of the Lord for help. When the unexpected has thrown you into worry and your fear, you need a solid foundation. You need the living word of God, not a catchphrase. Not a cliche. Romans 9.33 says, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. God doesn't want me to be a walking cliche. He doesn't want to have a cliche in Christianity. He wants me to be a living, breathing, and walking example of Jesus. Sometimes we use our own catchphrases at church. Come on, be honest. Sometimes you look at somebody who's going through a hard time and they come to you and your life's fine. So what do you say? Well, we'll just keep the faith. But if it's you going through a hard time, and it's you that needs a miracle from God, somebody just casts it, God just keep the faith. Doesn't do it. You hear me? I don't know if you are. Sometimes we'll say, someone wants to talk to us, and we'll say, hey, how are you doing? And we just expect them to say, oh, I'm fine, okay. And then you just keep walking. That's what you expect in your head. But then the unexpected happens. And you say to somebody, hey, how are you doing? And they start crying, and their life's falling apart, and they're just coming up with everything, and you're almost like, ah, ah, what do I do? And then we'll say a catchphrase, like, well, I'll keep doing my prayers. And we keep walking. No. You saying you'll keep me in your prayers doesn't make me feel better. Doesn't make me feel like you care. But if you stop right there and you pray with me, then I feel that you care. Do you see what I'm saying? We all have kinds of Christian uh, catchphrases we use. But sometimes people need, we need more than that. Sometimes people need a phone call. Sometimes people need someone to talk to and listen to hear. Sometimes we need a Holy Ghost power prayer right there on the spot. When my friend is in the hospital, not going to church now, but he's, he was in the hospital and, and he had a heart condition and he was scared because you could see that when you walk in. I didn't walk into the hospital room call the night. I didn't just say, hey buddy, turn that frown upside down. When life gives you lemons, just make some lemonade. No, I didn't. I walked into that room and said, here, we're going to stand up. We all have hands. Him, his son, his daughter, Ed Cole, myself. I laid my hands on his heart and I said, God, God's plans for good and not evil. You are going, God is going to get you out of this hospital. You're going to be okay because he's got a future and a hope. It's the devil who's come to try and steal, kill, and destroy your life, John 10, 10. But Jesus has come so you may have life and have it more abundantly. He's crying, his daughter's crying, his son's crying, I'm crying, Cole's crying, because the presence of God comes into the room, and that's better than turning your frown upside down. It's better than when life gives you lemons. Make lemonade. Because lemons are sour, by the way. You ever take lemon slice, put it in your mouth, that's what you do. You can't help it. You can't talk. It's not that good. Right? You put that lemon in your mouth, you just can't help it. Make that sour face. And life's circumstances are trying to make your life sour. To steal away your happiness and steal away your joy. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Some of you have heard this story before, but I'm going to tell you the end of it. Should be, should be the parakeet. Y'all know what a parakeet is? People buy a parakeet, put it in a cage. It goes back and forth and sings. It's supposed, it's supposed to sing back and forth. It is living the life. So once upon a time, there was a little parakeet named Chippy. His owner, Mrs. McMillan, loved her cute little bird, Chippy. She bought him a little cage, a little perch, and life was fun. And a little mirror that he could see himself in. I don't know why we put mirrors in bird cages, but it's maybe we're fooling them, thinking they're not alone, I'm not sure. But Chippy would swing on his perch and he would sing. 
So I get there, he there's only him and sin. And he would sing his heart out. And his own, this is my village, she just loved listening to her parakeet sing too. One day it was time to clean the house, so she got the vacuum cleaner out. She started vacuuming around. And she thought to herself, well, the bottom of that cage is looking pretty, pretty bad, so I'm going to open up the cage and I'm going to. I'm going to vacuum out all the stuff on the bottom. That'll be easy. And she opened up the cage, she kind of moved over because like most pets, they don't like the vacuum cleaner. And then as she started to vacuum out, the phone rang and when she looked over at the phone to get the phone, she forgot what she was doing and all of a sudden, bang, a little chippy goes up into the vacuum cleaner. She freaks out. She she, she, she shuts the vacuum cleaner off. She, she opens the canister. She takes out the whole dust bag. She rips it open, and there's Chimmy covered in dust and dirt and off and a little chimney. She freaks out, so what does she do? She, she doesn't know what to do. She, she picks up the board, she runs over to the sink, turns the sink up, and starts pouring water over poor Chimmy. Chimmy's having a bad day. It's okay, Chimmy. Just make lemonade. So now Chippy, who can't breathe the dust bag, now he, Chippy feels like this, he's being drowned out of the water. And the birds are cold and shivering, so she thinks, well, I gotta fix it, I gotta fix it. So she gets a hair dryer and starts blowing it for Chippy. And Chippy's like, yeah, I'm not knowing what's going on. Chippy had a very dramatic, dramatic experience. So a couple days pass by, and the neighbor comes over. And the neighbor uh, says, uh, what's going on? Mrs. McMillan tells the story, the dramatic events that happened to Chippy. And then the neighbor said, well, how is he now? And Mrs. McMillan says, well, he's fine, but he doesn't sing that much anymore. He just likes to sit there and stare. Life wants to steal your song. Yeah. You hear me? Life wants to steal your song. People will say, oh yeah, Christian, what do you got to be happy about? Because this is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice to be glad in it. Life wants to steal your soul. For those days when you want to change your name to bitter, when you want to give up and withdraw into your shell, when you feel forsaken and forgotten, when like Chippy, you don't feel like sinning much anymore, remember, God has a plan for good and not evil. God wants to bless you and not harm you. God wants to give you a future and a hope. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world and the weapons of our world strongholds. Yeah, and I get in, journey over here is with me. Can I get a second? Can I get somebody else to get in here with me? Amen. Yeah. I don't have a bunch of cliches and catchphrases. I have the living word of God. Yeah. I have the living God is on my side. God is in my corner. He's my provider. He's my teacher. He gave me the Holy Spirit as my comforter. Why so downcast, oh my soul? Make lemonade. Why so downcast, oh my soul? Turn that frown upside down. Why so downcast, oh my soul? Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Listen, I've leaned on God's comfort, His Holy Spirit, His presence in these last six months. I don't know what people are doing that don't. I can't imagine not having God in my corner through this. But we've got to share it. We can't just have a cliche Christianity where we just say a couple phrases and that's what they know. We've got to live it, walk it. We've got to live like Jesus. We've got to share His love. Are you here? Are you saying? Yeah. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me back there? <sighs> Shake. Yea, though I walk through valleys low, I don't have to fear the 
evil. It's interesting in that scripture because it's saying, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's not, Yea, though I build my house in the valley. Yea, though I go camping in the valley. Yea, though I have to take my vacation in the valley. Yea, I'm going to live there. No, I'm walking, to, I'm going through it. He wants to bring me through it. Why? So I can shoot around and say, I know what you've been going through. Because I went through it too. If God got me through, He'd get you through. Not just by keeping in my prayers or just keeping your faith or whatever it is we just like to pop off in a moment. But really, the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit's bringing me back because He added this to this 930 servant. So He's telling me you got to add this to this 1130 servant. And then it's this the Bible tells us we're supposed to bear each other's burdens. We're not supposed to say hi and then we just get a high back. We're supposed to bear each other's burdens. And there's been a lot of phone calls to me over the last six months with a lot of burdens. I'm just being honest. And there's been times that I've had trouble going to sleep because someone told me they just lost their job and they don't know what they're going to do. Or this happened, they're going to get laid off. Or all kinds of people are scared. And all kinds of things. The kids and, and, and all of it. And they call me and they talk to me. And I go to bed bearing the burdens. But Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burdens are light. So what do I do? I turn around and take all those burdens that were given to me. And I go to God and I say, God, you got to get, get Cindy your job back. God, you got to protect these kids. God, you've got you to do this. you got to do this. I stand in the gap for you. We have to stand in the gap for one of them. I talked about Bill Larder and he lost his wife. Rhea lost her dad. That's crushing. It's crushing. And we've got to be there with support. And can't you stand your feet right now as a point of contact? Yep, can't stand your feet. Yep, we can bring them to get in the room. <laughs> Shut your hands towards kids because they're going through a satanic attack right now. I'm telling you. How do I know? It's, am I allowed to share or not? You, you already share anyway, most of it. How do I know? Because there's being satanic animal sacrifices on their property. That's how I know. They're going through a satanic attack. You wouldn't want that on your property. You wouldn't want people doing that to you. And this is one of the things they're going through. And they go walk through the valley. I will fear no evil. So even on this property, I was arguing with them the other day, walking around, we were praying, laying hands, we were touching it, the beads, standing out there, calling with God, this is for you. You wouldn't want Satan worshippers showing up in your place. Yeah. That's right. Come on. Start to intercede. Start to pray for this family right now in Jesus' name. Bear this burden. Bear this burden. We submit ourselves to you, God, and we resist the devil, and he has to flee in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus' name. Devil, you take your hands off this man's property, this man's belongings, in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because when I read the book of Job, it tells me the devil has to go before God and report. He has to report to God. He's not allowed to do stuff unless God unless God allows it to happen. The devil is submission. He has to submit to the power of God. So God, we call on you right now. Stand in the gap. Jesus, you are our intercessor. The devil, flee in Jesus' name. That's what the word of God says. The word of God says we submit ourselves to you. You have to flee. So flee in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's see a freedom. Let's see a freedom in God to come. Testimonies of what you've done. Free the finances. Finish this. Finish this job that's been set in his life. Finish it, God. You're not a quitter. You don't do things halfway. We're calling you. We're calling you. Hold on, you God. I'm not letting go. We'll bring our petition to you and say, God, we're not going to stop. 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 Do this. You and your family and for your life and for your job. If you've got children, if you've got sons and daughters that aren't serving the Lord and they're out there and you feel like giving up and you feel like who 
you on my side. I'm here to tell you God is on your side. Listen to his voice. Stop listening to negative voices. Stop listening to voices that tell you, oh, people don't care, or the church don't care, or the they don't care, and all this negative stuff. You're listening to witches. Yeah. Stop listening to the negative people out there. Stop listening to the unbelievers. Come on, church. All they are offering you is lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. All they have to offer you is lemonade. Yeah. Why won't we also live in power of the living word of God? Come on. service today, please contact us with your prayer requests and let us know how City Church can help you and your family during this time. And continue to join with us in prayer for the end of this virus and restoration of community once again. We are putting our contact information on the screen. Also, we ask that you share our Facebook posts with your friends and help us share the good news of the gospel. There is hope in God. We're thankful for our City Church family and your generosity at this time. Your giving makes a big difference in the work of the church. We appreciate your ongoing support and want to let you know we're here for you. You're a valued member of our church family and your financial support will make a difference. Please go to our website for online giving at citychurchhalifax.ca. And we want to thank those who've already mailed in a check made out to City Church Halifax. Please contact the church for any questions you have about giving, and we will return your call and make arrangements to receive your donation to the church. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God and also in me. God bless you all and thank you for being a part of our online service today. Heaven here